So I want to actually bring out, before we even get started into our main program, I want to bring out Carrie Fulton, who is based right here at Howard. Um, she's at the Environmental Studies Program, an alum, the class of 07, um, and is also the founder of CheckTheWeather.net. So I would like to invite Carrie to come out here. You there? <laughs> Oh my. Ain't you? Ooh, okay. We here. That makes me happy. I was worried. Um, but I do want to take a moment as we talk about grounding in space. Howard University is known as the Mecca for a lot of reasons. If Howard University wanted to run its own country, we could. Harvard is the white Howard. And as many of you may or may not know, we just had a new class that crossed over um, and graduated on Mother's Day weekend. Fabulous, right? So when the good folk at Sunrise asked me um, if I wanted to come and do an introduction, I was like, dope. I should go and find a Howard alumni sweater. Not gonna happen this week. <laughs> right? But I got the colors, right? When I was here at undergrad at Howard University, we had recycling rooms with no bins. And now today we have an interdisciplinary environmental studies program. We have composting, we have community gardens, we have all of these different things. And that comes from the collective work of the student body. We also are, have been in the news a little bit, right? Maybe you've heard some things. Anybody walk on the grass? <laughs> no? Don't do that. Okay. Thanks so much. But that is because we stand and we, we build on a foundation that's much bigger than the 16 or so years since I was in undergrad right? Or however long. Don't ask me about my math right now. <laughs> uh, but that legacy is deeply ingrained, not only in Washington, D.C., but also the foundation of our country. So when we think about building and creating a Green New Deal, I want you to sit with what that truly means. My people were enslaved in the Industrial Revolution. My ancestors were killed for your oil. We stand on sacred ground and we talk about the Piscataways we talk about the indigenous roots of Washington, D.C. Why is the Anacostia named the Anacostia? Why is the Potomac named the Potomac? And we also have to think about why is Anna J. Cooper Circle called Anna J. Cooper Circle? And understanding that as we continue to grow and as we continue to build up our cities, we must be respectful of those who are there. Diversity is not an afterthought if we're really trying to build collective liberation. How many people live in DC? 
as you move around this city, get on beat or move out the way. Those drums that you hear in a go-go beat, those are the drums that came from us on the boats. Those are the drums that came with us during powwows. Those are drums of revolution. So if you live here and you believe in collective liberation and you believe in a Green New Deal. How many people in this room want to see a future that is built on renewable, clean, just energy and technology? How many people in here understand what it truly means to say that black lives matter. And how many of you know that they are interconnected? You cannot build a future the world in your soft circle. Walk out of your tribe. Talk to someone you don't agree with. Not to argue, just to listen. Understand that this bubble that we live in in DC is nothing like the rest of the world at all. Sit your first world problems down. <laughs> Sit your Montgomery County problems down. <laughs> Sit your Noma problems down. How many people came from Noma? Right? How many people came from Columbia Heights? Right? Petworth? Shots out and ground yourself. And the last thing I'm gonna say is short, but it's important. When you walk back to Anna J. Cooper Circle, go back to the early 1900s. There were two separate areas. One area was called Howard Town, and that's where the students and faculty of Howard University lived. Then there was another gated off community known as LeDroit Park. And that was built for affluent white people. And they built that gate to keep us out right next door. While I was at Howard, as I was preparing to graduate, I saw that gate come up again and it sits on the corner of Florida, and I think, what, Fifth Ave, maybe? Welcoming you to LeDroit Park. And in that same time period, I also saw the prices of housing go up dramatically. And I saw black people who built this neighborhood, who are ingrained in this city, being pushed out. That is not what we want. But in the early 1900s, some Howard students, they got together and they collectively broke down that gate one day. And that neighborhood just began to diversify. And more and more black people moved into LeJoyt Park and it changed the dynamics of the neighborhood. I 
encourage you to not wait to break that gate down. Don't wait for me to break the gates down. Break it in your own community. Go back to your communities and think about intentional diversity. Think about what it means to build intentionally with a thought of climate justice. And climate justice is not just saying, I want clean energy. Climate justice means I want Peyton to be free. Climate justice means I want to see a world that is better than this. Climate justice means I want to see a world where children are not separated from their families. <laughs> Climate justice also means I want to be radical in the actions I take locally. I want to think not just on a macro level of injustice, but my own personal ways of how I further exploit my own privilege. My time is up, <laughs> but I love y'all. Thank you so much, Carrie. Thank you. And I have to do this because I've never seen Crampton Auditorium with this many white people in it. <laughs> so, can I get it? Ooh. All right, y'all. Ciao.